Hey friends and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be exploring two of my favourite Python libraries, Streamlit and Plotly Express. And we're going to see how we can combine these two and generate an interactive map within Streamlit. Streamlit provides an excellent platform for building and developing apps very quickly. And you don't need to know much about how to develop the front end, that's all handled for you. All you need to concern yourself with is how to process data and how to present that data effectively on the Streamlit app. This allows you to create machine learning models that are easy to deploy as well as creating data visualizations and data exploration apps. And Plotly Express allows you to work with a variety of data visualizations in an interactive way and makes it much easier to work with compared to a static figure generated by Matplotlib. Streamlit allows you to work with multiple mapping libraries, including the built-in mapping function, but it also allows you to work with Plotly Express's Mapbox and Folium. So let's see how we can combine Plotly Express's Mapbox with Streamlit in order to view the locations of wells on the Norwegian continental shelf. Here we are within Visual Studio Code, and what we have here is some basic code that will create a basic Streamlit app. And it basically displays some text and a file uploader section. And this allows the user to upload a CSV file into the app. Now, just to run through this code here, we've got our import statements at the top where we're importing Streamlit as ST, Plotly Express as PX, and Pandas as PD. Next, we've got this little function called display map, and we'll come back to that in a few minutes. Next, we set up some of the, the page configuration, so we're having a wide layout on our window, and then we have some text which tells the user what to do. So in this case, we're uploading a file, and then we're telling them to upload a CSV file that contains the latitude and the longitude data. And then we've got our file uploader, and we've got a little bit of code here that checks whether the file has been uploaded. And if that is the case, then it's going to display what is within this if statement. If it is true, then we are going to display the, the header section, which is the well location map. And then we're going to read that CSV file that the user has uploaded. Here, I've got some extra code uh, due to the specifics of the file that I'm using, which has columns that are named differently to what we would expect. Now, if you regularly experience this, then you can account for that within your, your app. But in this case, I'm just doing this on the fly to account for those different names. So here we've got our wellbore name, our north, south uh, decimal degrees, east, west decimal degrees, and the wellbore purpose and the completion year. And all I'm doing is renaming the name to something a little bit more readable and friendly. In this case, well name, purpose, completion year, latitude, and longitude. So once I've read the data frame in, I'm going to rename some of the columns, and this is the order that they are in, in the file. So the order is slightly out of alignment with what is here within the use columns list. Uh, so always double check that when you're loading your file. Make sure that you've got the right columns. Once we've got the, the columns and the data frame loaded, we can then pass it into our function called display map, which is set to pass at the moment. So nothing's going to happen when we run this. So just to have a look at what our Streamlit app looks like at the moment, all we need to do is come down to the, the terminal and type in streamlit run app.py. And then after a few seconds, your browser window will open and you can see what we have here. We've got our upload a file, we've got our comments, and we've also got um, a title for this section. So we've got uploads written here three times, so it's probably a little bit overkill, but just for the purposes of demonstrating some of this code, where it's uh, common to have a header and then some text to explain what's going on. And then we've got a widget uh, title as well. So once we've done that, we can then browse for our file. And in this case, I've got the CSV file set here, and then we can load that in. So at the moment, we can see that Nothing has really happened on the app because we're just going straight through this, this function over here. So if I just resize this so that we can see what we're doing with both of them on the screen. So let's stop that app by pressing control C. And what I'm going to do is start padding out this display map function. So with this function, I'm passing in my location data, which is my data frame. And I wouldn't worry too much about that error on the right that's just appeared. That's just saying that Streamlit isn't running, but I'm just keeping the browser window open just for simplicity of showing. 
So now we can focus on this function and we've got our location data here, which is our data frame that we've just loaded, but it's not doing anything. So we need to create our figure. We can do that simply by calling or creating a new variable called fig and we'll set that to px.scatter and we'll set that to map box. And here we need to pass in a few, a few things. So our location data, this is our data frame that we're going to pass in. Next, we need the, the latitude, which is LAT. And we'll set that to the latitude uh, column within our data frame. And then we need the lawn or longitude, which is going to be longitude. And then we need to set a few extra parameters in here. What do we want to show when we hover over our points on the map box? Well, in this case, I'm wanting to show the, the well name. So we'll set the hover name as equal to the well name column. So these names all tie back to the columns that I've got in my data frame. Now we have that, we can then uh, update our layout just to help us set the style and also uh, some of the margins if we wanted to. So I'm just going to set update layout and we will set the map box, box uh, style and we'll set that equal to open street map. So this is completely free. Uh, some of the maps that you can use with Plotly Express require a map box account. But in this case, we're using open street maps, so we are fine to use, use this. And then I'm going to return my figure. So now we've got a function to create our figure and return it. We then need to actually show it on our app. So if I save that as it is and rerun the Streamlit app, we can then see that we've got our app back. So now that we've set up our display map function, we now need to take our figure that we've just returned here, px underscore map, and we need to pass it into Streamlit's st plotly chart. And we just pass in px underscore map, and we save that. And now we can go back to our app, load our file and then what happens is the map will be generated down in the bottom here. However, you can see that we've got a little part of Norway here, but we've not got the full extent of our uh, points on the map. So we can zoom out, but we want to do this automatically. And we can do that just by adding an extra parameter up here called zoom and we'll set that to free so that when we um, add a comma there and then save that, and we can reload our file, the map will regenerate and it will be zoomed out to the right place. So that's great, we've got our map. And now when we hover over our points on the map, we can see the well name as the main title for our info box. And then we have the latitude and the longitude for each of our points. Now that's all brilliant. So we've now got an interactive map within our Streamlit app. So there are a few other things that we can change within our Plotly Express map. And one that you may notice is that our well map doesn't really take up the full width of the column. So when I expand the window, you can see that we have this very small map. Now we can make it expand and fit the container width. And all we need to do to make that expand is add in a new parameter called use container width and we set that to true. So when we save that, we'll see that Streamlit updates automatically in the background. And now we have a full width map and it will stretch the full way across. So this can allow us to add extra information on the left hand side of our uh, map here. So if we've got information about the area or the, the fields or anything else that is contained within the file that we're using, we can display it alongside. So as you can see, it's very simple to add a map using Plotly Express to a Streamlit app. If you've enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content from my channel, click on that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. And I'll leave a video that you may be interested in just up here. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.